Hallo. Amai. <laughs> um, voor ik ga beginnen, ga ik even kort uh, twee dienstmededelingen doen. Um, ten eerste, ik ben nogal zenuwachtig. Uh, ik kreeg daar straks de keuze tussen een, uh, zo een handmicrofoon of een headset. En dat is eigenlijk een beetje hetzelfde als kiezen tussen mijn oorbellen aanhouden of mijn speakbriefjes vast kunnen houden. Ik heb voor de speakbriefjes gekozen. Um, een tweede korte dienstmededeling. Ik ga deze keynote speech in het Engels geven. Uh, enerzijds omdat het thema van vandaag hier diversity en inclusion is. Uh, en anderzijds omdat ik zo dat dik campus accent wat kan wegmoffelen. Voilà. <laughs> so, here goes nothing. When I first learned I was awarded a fellowship at the VUB, I was very excited and I think it showed. <laughs> um, my excitement and the way I responded um, is part of the reason why I'm up here giving this speech. It stemmed from sheer surprise. I had absolutely no idea there were people in the academic world that were following what I was doing, what I've been writing over these past few years. I must admit that this particular world, academia and universities especially, um, have always somewhat intimidated me. Mainly because I left one long before I was supposed to and ended up doing a lot of school hopping uh, afterwards. It somehow makes me self-conscious whenever I enter a room like this one. My years in secondary school had been nice enough, uh, but I was and am uh, easily bored. I still remember my first day at the University of Ghent, where I was going to study sociology. Now, I look a lot younger than I am, <laughs> so this was almost 15 years ago. Gave myself a little compliment there, I know. Um, I walked into that auditorium with uh, about 300 other students, and most of them knew some of the other students, and they had already formed little cliques. I, however, uh, chose uh, Ghent because it was the city furthest away from my hometown that I could think of at the time. My parents are here, they can, <laughs> they can tell you that's the truth. Um, so I was all alone. And um, I was the only person of color in the entire auditorium. And it was daunting. Heads turned, and I heard people whisper. I had always been sur surrounded by mostly white friends and family, but in that space where everybody at that age was trying to blend in anyway, I felt very much so that I stuck out like a sore thumb. And that is a feeling that has stayed with me. That image of the university, of academia, as a snow white, daunting and uninviting, uninviting space has never quite left my subconscious mind. So, my first uh, instinct when asked to deliver the speech was to use all the big words in my vocabulary and make sure it was known that I too belong here. But as I was typing, I had to pause to laugh at myself uh, and the pompous and unnatural dis dissertation I was writing. So I decided to start fresh and write a speech that sounds like me. Just like I try to write articles and columns and books that sound like me, that people who um, speak the language I use will all understand. Not so very long ago, I shared a stage with a very cool academic in this very city at a big event for um, um, advertisement executives and employees. And this professor uh, talked about inclusion and used a popular phrase by Verna Myers. The quote goes, diversity is being invited to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance. I loved it at first. I saw how the narrative resonated with the audience that was 95% white and middle class and eager to learn about these things, just as I'm sure that most of you here are eager to learn about these things. But then I got to thinking about parties. I like parties. That's just a topic I love thinking about, um, being somewhat of a party animal myself. There's people in this room that can vouch for that. I love hosting events. Even when I had no money and I was a student at one of those many um, institutes of higher learning that I attended, um, 
I would host dinner parties at my dorm room. I would always think carefully about the food um, I was serving and the people I wanted to invite. You can imagine how much I loved planning uh, my wedding. I always say my wedding, I should say our wedding, um, five years ago. Uh, we threw a big party that combined all the things that make us us. We rented a big domain, had a big stretch tent, and held traditional and non-traditional ceremonies. On the actual wedding day, it became clear in the afternoon that we had about 70 extra people because of my enthusiastic Rwandan family. I went to see the Rwandan chef, uh, slightly panicking, um, to tell him that we had so many extra mouths to feed. He gave me this huge smile and said, honey, we prepared for 100 over anyway, because that's how good parties go down. Then I got worried about seating, but my friends and my colleagues and my family just said right away, don't worry about a thing, we will sit outside of the tent, or in worst case scenario, we'll get some folding chairs. I think about Shirley Chisholm every time I tell that story. She was the first black woman to run um, for president in the United States. And she famously said, if you can't get a seat at the table, bring some folding chairs. When I used to host my dinner parties, I would be busy all day cooking, trying to make different dishes for my friends who, were, um, who ate vegetarian or vegan or kosher or halal. It would be stressful. <laughs> Uh, but I thought I was showing my love and respect for those invited by catering to their wishes. Until a friend once pulled me inside, said, girl, do you know about potlucks? Now, a potluck can be a picnic or a barbecue or a dinner party, it doesn't matter. But the point is that every guest brings a dish that they love and know how to make. I cannot hype up potlucks enough. <laughs> um, most guests actually really love uh, preparing and sharing a, a, a food that they know and they, they like to make. And most hosts really like <laughs> how, how it's less stressful and they can just be. So, to come back to the point I was trying to make, if diversity is being invited to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance, I think we're setting the bar for a great party pretty low. I don't really want to call a babysitter, fix my hair and makeup, to go to a party where I have to sit and wait to be asked to dance. I want to go to a party where I can bring some sambusas, brochettes or fufu and taste some tacos, tagine or fries. I want to go to a party where the music compels me to dance where so many people want to be there that they're willing to sit on the floor um, or bring their own folding chairs, and where we take home some Tupperware because we calculated there, that there will be more than enough for all of us. That, to me, seems like the attitude the academic world should have, not just be a welcoming environment for diverse scholars, not just grant them a seat at certain tables, not just invite them to speak up in lectures, but make the courses, the professors, the subjects so attractive that people will want to bring their own knowledge to the potluck, their own stories as folding chairs, and their own narratives as different genres of music to dance to. Strive for a great party. Strive for a great world. This is the place where minds are shaped, where opinions are challenged, and research creates wealth. Let us use that great power responsibly and bust these doors wide open to all.